who's gone down that road, someone who, who has contemplated abortion, and then put some scripture alongside that and see what God says to us. Been excited about today for a long, long time. Agnes Hass is going to come and share her story. Come on up here with us, Agnes. Good morning, Agnes. I got you a stool. You can sit up real high here and I'll look up to you. You want the little one? Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> Yeah. How are you today? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Does everyone know Agnes? Y'all know Agnes, don't you? So. How long have y'all been here with us at Boyd? About three years? About or three so? years now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you have a story, and you believe that God wants other people to hear your story and to encourage them to, uh, to do the right thing, right? Yes. So if we, uh, if we go all the way back to pre-Agnes, uh, there was a, um, a time when you may not have been here, right? Um, uh, the, uh, abortion was in play with, with even your birth, right? Yes. Um, my mother was 14 when she got pregnant in um, Liberia, so instead of go going to her mom and dad, she didn't do that. She went over to her friends. Mm -hmm. And um, so what it did was they um, give her traditional abortion inducing medication that would have, you know, killed me. And th this is something that was known to work. Like mm -hmm. it had worked pretty much the whole time. And for some reason it didn't work on me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so she went back to her friends again and they kind of moved it up to the next level yeah so you know and um, this this particular time it it was very strong and um, it involved getting like a glass bottle like a coke bottle mm. and grinding that thing up really well and then mixing it with the traditional um, abortion it using you know um, herbs she took that, it didn't work either. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she basically gave up and just went over to her mom and dad. Now, her dad was a pastor. So mm. that was kind of like, yeah. Tough your discussion. daughter is 14 years old and she's pregnant, you're pastor. Mm. That's not good. Mm. So, you know, she went over to her mom and, you know, her mom obviously and told her and Tom, before she went, my dad gave her $250. Back in Liberia, that's a lot of money uh -huh. to, you know, go on and have um, abortion because she's tried, you know, the first abortion deal, it didn't work. The second one, so 250 bucks was going to kill me. Oh, At that point, she dollars. just broke down and went to, you know, her mom and dad. And mm. her grand my grandmother was like, nope, we're not doing it. Mm. So for Amen. some reason, you know, God just kept me in, you know, his... His hands. God had big plans for Agnes. I think he does. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, you were born in Texas, were you? Oh, no. I was transplanted from <laughs> Liberia to Indiana, and I was like, I'm not doing this yet. So Texas was like, you're coming home. What was your plans when you came to the United States? Wow. That was big. My plan was come to America. Now, mind you, I was not educated at all. Mm. I didn't have any clue, you know, on what um, what it took to make money. All I knew was America was basically heaven on earth. So the goal was come here, work, save a lot of money in about six months, and I was going to go back home and build a hotel. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Um, hotel slash nightclub slash boutique slash everything because mm. you know that you know stuff like that makes money. But uh, when I got here and then life was the, like, oh, it does not, you just don't come in here and find the money tree behind the house. You had to go earn it. So, you know, life pretty much was not what we taught. <laughs> but this is the American dream, right? You got to earn it. Yeah. So you, uh, you finally decided that you were going to go to nursing school. 
I did. Uh, when I got here, again, my reading level was at a second grade level. This is reading, writing, and math. I do not like math, so <laughs> that was even worse. And um, I basically forced myself into learning. Yeah. I got placed you know, into um, high school because you know I, I studied a little bit more, so I was 17 and I was in ninth grade. Mm. <laughs> So I was able to test out on a lot of stuff. So I got out earlier than, you know, when I was supposed to actually graduate. You know, according to, you know, our um, system here, yeah, I was going to age out of the high school system. Yeah. So I got here in 2007, pushed myself hard, and I got out of high school in 2008. Okay. So I was um, in my, I was living by myself by this time. I was in my um, apartment. I went down and got the mail, and I, you know, went through the newspaper. I we didn't get in the mail and stuff from the computer and things like that. You had to get the paper and actually <laughs> read. Old school. You know, flip through it, and they had this, um, you know, um, advertisement, and it was for a nurse assistant school. Nobody told me what it was, so I was like, you know what? Every African is a nurse, so why not start, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> So I got the address, and I went over to the school. I got um, information. They told me how much it was going to be, $1,200. So my bank was right um, across from, from you know, the school. I went to my bank, and I got a loan. <laughs> my very first loan. <laughs> Going to nursing school. I got myself in my nurse assistant program, and I came out within four weeks, and I was a nurse assistant. So uh -huh. I worked as a nurse assistant. And then I, I applied for nursing school I got accepted in a nursing program in Kentucky Louisville Kentucky they said Louisville and I'm like no it's Louisville we're still <laughs> fighting over that so um I got accepted into that went through everything it was a good thing you know I, my job that I worked with at the time they actually you know had um locations in Kentucky so they transferred me to Louisville Kentucky but the nursing school would not take a pregnant, you know, woman. It was very straight because, you know, pe you know, being pregnant, people have different you know, experiences. Yeah. Well, I had went over to my doctor to have just my regular, you know, doctor's um, appointment. I did it every um, six, um, six months. So I'm sitting in this room and, you know, the nurse, you know, comes and did the regular, you know, stuff. And then Dr. Lucena came in my doctor and she had this smile on her face well great we got along pretty well so nothing big right she goes well ev everything is great you 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 know healthy I'm like yeah so now can I go she goes but there was one problem so I'm like Dr. Lucinda I'm going to nursing school I am moving to Kentucky you're not gonna keep me here <laughs> she goes no you're pregnant okay. and I said no I can't be what do you mean I'm pregnant? I mean, I'm, I'm, I just got in nursing school. Mm -hmm. I'm 20 years old. She goes, no, you're pregnant. So, of course, just being mean, I'm like, you know what? Why don't you get out of that my room? Go right down there. I mean, we both know there is a family that really needs that news right now, not me. Yeah. So take that news, you know, and give it to the right family. She goes, Agnes, you're pregnant. At that point, it just kind of dawned on me. And I'm like, wow. How did it happen? You know, obviously, I didn't sit my pants and close my legs. So that's what happens. So um, I just felt like, wow. I I was numb. I couldn't yeah. believe it. Everything changes now. Yes. So I'm seeing my future basically flashing in front of me because, again, being African, nursing is a big thing. Everybody has to be a nurse. This is where the m money is. So I got in my car and I went to my apartment. I did not park my usual spot. I actually parked at a whole different building because I didn't want anybody to know I was home. Um, I basically, I was living in the dark at that time because before I even got into all of this here, uh, when we first got to America, we got put in this um, um, community that was, that had a lot of you know um, immigrant especially, you know, Liberian refugees and stuff like that. We had a lot of Liberians, and I did not like what I saw. Mm -hmm. So I was going to make, I was going to change my life. So I, I made it my duty to go into the community and talk to grown women what to do so you don't get pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, you, I mean, we both know, you know, because what happens is you get pregnant, and then 
you get sucked into the welfare system. Mm -hmm. And then 20 years later, your life has not improved. And the sad thing is your children pretty much, you know, um, their life doesn't really improve either. Yeah. So I was making good on my promise, and I started changing some minds, you know, trying to e e educate the community about what was going on, even though I was the, the baby. But then here I am, then I'm pregnant. Yeah. I'm not married. I was telling them, don't get pregnant until you get married. <laughs> and you're <laughs> pregnant and not married. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, the shame, the guilt, shame the regret, and, guilt. and everything you could have ever thought about just came on me. So when I found out I was pregnant, I made a mind. I just kind of went into my little corner and just hid myself. Mm -hmm. I did not want to be seen. I didn't even tell my mother. So my mother is in her, she's in her 40s and she can never have children again ever. So I was supposed to go on and bring children to, to her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my grandmother has 16 children. Oh, my. And then my mother had one, and which is me. So from the moment we got to America, she was like, you're going to give me children now, now. And I'm like, Mom, it don't work like that. <laughs> I'm not just going to. She goes, I need children. You know, everybody has got children but you. <laughs> they all live in the welfare system. I don't want to be like that, Mom. I'm trying to help myself out. Yeah. But then she was praying and just been praying to God. So I basically hid myself. I did not talk to anybody at all mm -hmm. for about two days. Then uh, you decided to go visit Planned Parenthood. Yep. I worked night shift, so I was, I was night out. I couldn't sleep at night. <laughs> I was pretty much passed out all day. At night, I was pretty much, I mean, I still struggle with that, you know. Yeah. Why well, Gary's trying to sleep? I'm like still trying to scrub the little, uh, doing stuff around the house. So I'm off at night, and then the TV came on, obviously. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking, what did I do? How did I go wrong? How could I do this here? Because I got three problems. I'm not just pregnant, but I don't have a job. I don't have my apartment. Because yeah. I mean, I give you know everything up. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, going to I was nursing moving, school. Mm -hmm, and now I can't even go to school. So I'm going to be a nurse assistant for the rest of my life. <laughs> and be saying, hello, Uncle Sam, I need you. Feed me now, my kid. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, the TV was on, and this commercial came on Planned Parenthood. Care no matter what. No matter what. So I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to Planned Parenthood. I will go get help. I got up the next morning, got a little bit of life in myself, I guess, you know, shower, didn't even eat. I didn't even eat for about a day or two. I, I was just numb. So I went to Planned Parenthood. I got out of my car. I walked to that front door. And the lady, you know, that was sit, sitting you know, in the um, waiting um, area, she was a black woman. So I felt, oh, I feel comfortable, right? So, um... She, you know, greeted me and stuff like that. And um, she asked me, you know, what brings you in? I was like, well, I'm pregnant, so I'm here. She goes, oh, you're in the right place. So I'm like, yes, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. And, um, you know, asked me a little bit of questions. I told her a little bit about myself. You know, she got me in a little room, consultation room. And then we began to talk. And um, she says, so we are in the right place. We will get you help. Tell me a little bit more about yourself. So I was like, I'm 20 years old. So I just got accepted to my first nursing program. Mm -hmm. You know, and Tom, I was supposed to be moving out in about three weeks because, you know, two weeks actually because school started in three weeks. I had my, I mean, I had everything packed in my Penske truck moving from Indiana <laughs> to Kentucky. <laughs> and, Tom, um, you know, I had, you know, some boxes and stuff still, you know, packed and things like that. I said, well, I don't have a job right now because I believe they already hired somebody to take my position. I can't go to nursing school because I'm pregnant. They will not take a pregnant woman at all. And I can't stay in my apartment. I got to get out. This was a section eight, you know. Yeah. You know, the I paid the full rent, but there had people that was waiting for that unit, mm -hmm. like up and ready. Yeah. And she said, well, we can fix everything and you can go to school. So I'm thinking she was going to do what we do in Africa, a lot of corruption, right? Just a mm -hmm. phone call, the rules doesn't apply. 
So I'm like, oh, I can be pregnant and go to school. Yeah. It's going to be great. And she goes, no, we can help you fix it. It's, by this time, nothing is connected yeah. at all. And then it dawned on me, and she goes, well, you're seven weeks pregnant. At, by this time, there is not even a baby. There is nothing. The word baby never, was never even brought, brought up. Mm-hmm. The word human being was never brought up at all the whole time. She goes, oh, um, you know, we can, you know, give you, you know, some pills, or if not, so we can do ex- um, abortion. And then I was like, abortion? For what? She goes, think about it. At your age, you're 20 years, so you got to step into your first nursing program. That don't happen a lot. Mm-hmm. She said, you can always, always have babies. Always have babies. She said, but when you go to nursing school and you come out, your life will be so much better because you'll be in control of your life. And the more she talked, the more I just drifted away. I even got more numbed. I got more depressed. Um, I got more angrier. Just, this is not what I came here for. You thought she was going to help and aid come alongside you during your pregnancy. Mm-hmm. So I checked my income since I did work. It was going to cost me $250 to murder my baby abortion. I was like, I got 250 in the bank, but <laughs> you know, that's not going to happen. So when I left Planned Parenthood, she basically said to me what I had in my womb was a block of tissue that needed to be taken out. Mm. Because had I not gone to nursing school, my life would have never improved. I would have never really lived up my, my life because I won't make money, right? Because yeah. it was all about my career. I left Planned Parenthood with a stack of paper, you know, that tells you what, what was abortion, what to expect during abortion and after the abortion. Mm-hmm. Nothing was said to me about adoption. Nothing was said to me about you can have a baby and then go back to school at all. It was just about 250, we fix a problem, you'll be in school. You won't even feel nothing. Just Boy. a business exchange. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So I left, I honestly don't know how I left Planned Parenthood because I was not in my right mind. I, I remember walking out of the door and that was it. I got in my car and I sat there and just cried. And I just, just, I just lost it. So I'm like, wow, I mean, you came from Africa. You're supposed to improve your life, but here you are. Mm. You know, you're going to be on a welfare system for the rest of life. <laughs> That's it, because it would have been hard, you know, for me to be a single mom. Her dad, I just, you know, we were not, like, very close. It was just one of those things. You got to be very careful. Don't just have sex with anybody. Mm. Don't. I knew better, but it was that one time. Mm. That's what it takes. It's good. And somehow I got home. I don't know how I got home. And again, I parked my car in a whole different building again because I didn't want nobody to know. In the African community, there was no privacy. There was no, hey, can I come and visit you? If you're home, I'm coming. I'm not leaving. Mm. So I did not want anybody around me at all. Again, my mother, so we live in this building right here, right? Um, this is my apartment. My mother is right there. She's on the second floor, just literally. And anybody who met my mom, you know, there was nothing of prophecy with her. <laughs> She's right in your space. And she, she called me. I actually unplugged my phone. Like, yeah. <laughs> I have my AT&T phone, the house phone, and I did not want anybody to call me. I turned my cell phone off. I unplugged this thing out of the wall because I didn't want anybody to talk to me. I got home and I got really, really depressed. I got really, really depressed because I'm just like, wow, I've got two weeks and then my life is gone. Uh-huh. And Tom, um, I was home again at night because I didn't sleep at night. The TV again, the same channel, CW25. <laughs> and then they had this commercial on Women's Care Center of South Bend, Indiana. 
You know, a bunch of Christians, they told me not to go to. They, Planned Parenthood was very, very adamant. Those Christians that would condemn you to hell, don't do it. They don't like women. They do not like women having rights and their freedom. Don't go there. I'm kind of stubborn, so I like to try things for myself. <laughs> Again, the next day I got up, got shower and no food, went over there. And Tom, I walked into Women's Care Center of South Bend, Indiana, less than three blocks away from Planned Parenthood. <laughs> God is good. Amen. Um, I walked in again, this old lady, beautiful gray hair, just silver looking thing, and she was just so <laughs> nice. And Tom, she said, hi. What brought you in here today? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm pregnant. <laughs> and she looked at me. She goes, oh, you're in the right place. And I'm like, oh, please don't say that again. Yeah. Don't. And I'm just like, oh, I've already heard that. And that was, I'm like, well, I guess it can't get any worse. Yeah. I've went to the place I was supposed to care for women. So, yeah. I mean, I'm here now to get condemned to hell because that's what the Christians do. And Tom, um, and she, she asked me a question. She goes, can I pray with you? And then I broke down. And I said, please, please do. And she came close to me and held me so tight. And she wrapped me around her arms and just prayed. And the more she prayed, I just felt life was being tucked back into me. Amen. When I walked into that place, I, I was just this, I felt like I was just this thing in the middle of nothing, just flying. You know, I had nothing. Thank you. Um, and um, she just held me so tight, and then she came close to my ears, and she said, God loves you. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. She said, you are blessed. She said, do you know you have a baby inside of you? <laughs> do you know God loves you so much that he blessed you with a child? And I just said, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And then, you know, she, we kind of, you know, went away for a little bit. And then she got me in a room. And she said, so how can we help you? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just here. <laughs> I said, you know, then I told her, I said, well, I'm 20 years old. I'm not married. I don't really have a serious relationship going on. The dad, I'm not even going to talk about it because how am I going to tell this man, hey, we slept to get a non-pregnant. In Africa, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work. That's not my baby. Mm -hmm. So the entire community knows your business. Yeah. And I'm talking old bring candles and light the candle broad they let put in your face. Are you sure it's me? I'm not going through that. So I was like, forget it. And Tom, I said, well, I just, I, I, I got accepted into the nursing program. I cannot go to school because I'm pregnant. They would not take a pregnant woman. I'm, technic I'm technically unemployed. <laughs> and for me to get a job, it was a miracle. That place is not a place people want to quit. They worked at 25, 30 years until they retired. Yeah. So for me to even get that job was a blessing from God. So I was like, I'm never going to get Man. anything again like that. So I guess I'll go back and be a host, at, you know, where I was working before I got into the, um, into um, healthcare. I said, I don't have an apartment. My, I need to give my apartment up in two weeks. Mm. She goes, you don't have to worry about anything. You're in the right place. And then I'm like, yes, don't again. I've, yeah. I said, ma'am, don't. Don't say that again because you don't understand. I went to Planned Parenthood and they told me those words. Mm. And all they gave me was murder, abortion. She goes, no, no. She held my hands and she goes, you are in the right place. And I'm telling you, she said, there are people across this country or across this nation. There are people in Indiana. There are people in South Bend. There are people at Notre Dame. There are people in Goshen all across this town that give money to us so we can come alongside people like you and help you. Yeah. 
And I was like, so what is it going to cost me? She goes, nothing. And I'm like, okay. She's, she said, well, we're here, and we're going to help you throughout the entire pregnancy. And we're not going to leave you even after the baby is here. We're going to help you until you get on your feet. Yeah. And I was like, okay. She asked me, and she said, can, I, can we do a ultrasound? And I was like, I don't have money. That thing is not <laughs> cheap. I'm just a nurse assistant. I don't make a lot of money. She goes, it is free. I'll take it. I'll take it. She goes, all right. So, you know, she went and got the lady. You know, they told me in the process and stuff like that. And this lady, I'm by myself. I don't have my mother. I don't have anybody. Not even my best friend, Nelly. Nobody, nobody knows I'm pregnant, but it's, like it's just me and God. And this lady held my hand so tight. And she was right there. They had my hair, you know, kind of tilt, tilted upward. I could look right at the computer, you know, stuff. And Tom, um, she said, I will, you know, apply this gel, be a little cold, but, you know, as I rub, it's going to start to kind of get warm. So that's okay. We'll, you know, keep you comfortable. And we'll, your pro pro privacy will be met. Mm. And, you know, of course, I'm like, you better because I'm a nurse assistant. I don't play that game. Well, if you know, privacy, you got to keep that thing looking good, all right? Great. And then um, on the very first deal, all I saw was this little drawing thing. It, was, it looks like a little top hole, you know, with the big old circling a long tail. That's it. <laughs> and um, she goes, that is your baby. Mm. And I'm like, that's a baby? It looks like a top hole. <laughs> and then as she you know kind of put apply a little bit of pressure the heartbeat was yeah. so strong Amen. and she says that is your baby's heartbeat she that made said, the difference didn't it oh my goodness it it changed me and i was like wow that's a baby yeah that's a heartbeat yes and i said I'm having a baby. I am going to have a baby. <laughs> and I'm mean, she goes, okay. I'm like, I'm having a baby. And you know, I'm just, I just like, I was so happy. And this sweet lady, she just looked at the lady. She goes, yes. And I'm just like, yes, what? Now, I did not know this, but she knew every about 85% of women that had ultrasound chose life. Mm -hmm. I had no clue. But she knew that. So when I said, I'm having a baby, and she goes, yes. <laughs> and then she said, well, I'm just going to tell you right now, this is why we do what we do. Yeah. Over here, we save life. Mm. Amen. We protect life. We come alongside women, and we help them throughout the whole pregnancy and even after you're done, because yeah. God gives life. Amen. And um, we push the archer sound because women that see that, they usually will choose their baby's life mm -hmm. over murdering their child. And that's something Planned Parenthood never offered to no. me. No, they won't. No. So I went on. I left that place, a brand new woman. I had life back into me. <laughs> oh, I parked my car in my spot. I wasn't ashamed <laughs> no more. I was home. I called my mom. And I'm like, mom, I'm pregnant. She goes, I knew it. And I'm like, you what now? She goes, I had a dream. That's good. I had a dream, and you were pregnant. And I'm like, Mama, come on, we're not in Africa, stop. I mean, this, no. She goes, no, I did. I knew you were home. I knew you were home. Mm -hmm. She said, God showed me in my sleep that you were going to have a baby. She said, but I just prayed that you wouldn't, yeah, that you wouldn't have born the baby. But she never told me. So I was like, why did you tell me? She goes, because you like your daughter. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went into the community. I was like, hello, I'm pregnant. And I'm not ashamed. I'm not afraid. 
I don't, I don't regret it. But those are the enemy's tools, uh, shame, guilt, oh, man. regret. Now, <sighs> here you are a, a believer, and <laughs> you stepped outside of God's will, but, but God was not done with you. Oh, no. God did not kick you to the curb. Eva, would you stand up? I told you. <laughs> That's a redemption story, church. What so I went for you to do this. You know, um, I never told people my story. I mean, why would I go tell people I almost killed my child? Mm. That's not. That's not something. I would have ever, for me to sit in, I mean, gosh, I feel so comfortable. I felt like I was just going to go, ah, but then it's good. So Gary, I never told Gary. Yeah. He didn't even know. My mother, though, I did not tell my mother I went to Planned Parenthood. I never told her. I never told anybody, not even my best friend. Yeah. It was one of those things that I just kept to myself because, again, I felt so I felt angry that I took myself to play parenthood, but I didn't know. I did not know this world that was that was gonna get that was going to get pushed on me. So I went through my nine months and I had my daughter pretty much with nobody. <laughs> By the way, she was the first baby born in the toilet in a brand new hospital. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little inside joke. We give a hard time about that. <laughs> but um, I was, I went in to live. My water broke with nothing, no pain, nothing. I got to St. Joseph Hospital at about 5, 10 ish, 7 15. My daughter was out. And I had the doctor that was assigned, you know, to the um, hospital came in there. And he goes, Oh, you just got here. Your friend's been here 24 hours, so just relax, and I'm like, get out of my room. I'm not going to be here 24 hours, and no, she's not my friend. And, um, you know, they tried to push all kinds of medication and stuff on me, and I was like, you should have read my chart before you came in my room, because if you read my chart, you would have known it said no. I had a deal in my medical record in bold prints. You put a knife on me, and I will sue you. No C-session. I was an African woman. I was going to go through the African way. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when he came in there, Romeo, a really nice guy, you know, just being a doctor. And when he pretty much said it wrong, I was like, out. I'm not going to be here 24 hours. I'm going to have my baby, and I'm going to walk out of here with my child with no issue. <laughs> so we went through all of that. It was 2016 at work that I, the first time I ever, ever told anybody my story. I worked at Forest Park Medical Center at the time. I believe it was the second or last debate between President Trump and Hillary Clinton. Ted Cruz was my guy. I'm in Texas, come on now. <laughs> my little bias on that one. Um, when my home state of Indiana went for Trump, I was like, Gary, too bad. We're going to be voting for the New Yorker. That's it. But then on that debate stage, when the issue of life came up, yeah, I was thinking, you know what? She's had a child. She's gone through, and she's a woman, so she will understand. I sat in my bed, and I cried because Hillary Clinton said the baby in the mother's womb is not a baby on the national debate stage. And then it kind of brought my wound back. And I just felt like, boy, she really just hit my PTSD. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe what I was hearing at all. I just, I was, I was like, wow. And then here comes this man with all of his missteps in life, defending life. Yeah. He said, the baby in the mother's womb is a human being. Mm -hmm. And that human being needs to be protected. And we will. We will defund Planned Parenthood. <laughs> and I'm, Gary was asleep. <laughs> Gary was asleep, and I was like, did you hear that? <laughs> he is going to defund Planned Parenthood. He goes, 
I'm going to sleep. And I'm like, Pip, you should hear this. We're going to be voting for this man. That's it. And um, so I went to work the next day. And of course, women, you know, we talk. I was in a break room. And then people started talking about the debate. At first, I walked away. But then as I came back, they kept on going on. I had three black women that I love. Gary met two of them, Nicole, Monica, and Miss Tammy. And they defended Planned Parenthood. They said Donald Trump was wrong for saying what he said on the debate stage. Mm. The baby is on a baby because it is on a baby because Hillary Clinton says so. So you've got a bunch of women, about eight or 12 women in this break room, and then I just lost it at work. I believe we had about 65 surgeries that day, and I was like, that's it, forget it. I remember I got up, and I just let my hands down on this table, and the noise in the room just kept everybody quiet. Don't mess with me. That's just that. Now, that's just me. I said, have any of you women in here been to Planned Parenthood? You? No. But they, they, they help women. I'm like, no, they don't. Now, let me tell you my story. When you have a story like you, Agnes, you have a lot of opportunities to, to share that story. And I believe God's going to give you other audiences to, to share your story along the way. And we thank you so much for, for coming up here and sharing your story today. I know that takes a ton of courage. Bless you, sweetheart. Thank you. See? <laughs> 